G'day guys, what's cracking? Ralph Mayhew here and stoked to be with you. Tonight I've come out in the pitch black of night. There is not a cloud in the sky. I forgot my shutter release and we're going to take some epic star trails. So stick around to see how I manage that. <laughs> Just not working. Gosh. Oh, so good. As you can probably see, there's not a lot for you to see. I'll just turn the camera around and I'm going to turn on the lights for you. There you go. You can see these amazing trees that have no leaves, no foliage, no whatever. And they are scattered around the horizon, including this beast of a tree just here. That's just truly stunning. And we're going to use one of these trees in this beautiful Australian scenery that I am going to um, capitalize on to make some wonderful foreground subject for the star trails in the background. So I found a subject. Look at this beautiful tree, those textures, the arms jutting out, the branches against the sky. It's going to be an epic shoot especially with a background of just star trails behind it what you need to do to start this is you bump up your iso to as high as it'll go and you take a test shot to get your composure right you just use your other settings to make sure there's enough exposure to take the shot and for the shot to actually uh, work then what you need to do is make sure your focusing is right you do that by zooming in using your live view you zoom in really really close like up to a hundred times and then you make your focus as clear and as sharp as it can possibly be on the subject so don't worry about the stars stars will take care of themselves on the subject so you've got to frame the subject make sure it's level make sure it's dead center or where it is in the shot that you really want it to be and then make sure your focus on it through your lens is really really sharp now the beauty of this photography is it doesn't matter when you do shooting light trails if the moon is massive at the moment we have we have like uh, I don't know three-quarter moony is that what it's called it probably isn't you can comment below and correct me on that one if you wish the extra ambient light um, is is more important in terms of how bright the city is and in my case I'm shooting this way and the city is that way it's about 50 K's that way um, but you can see the glow that it creates but that's okay I think it adds to a bit of light contrast in terms of uh, the shot um, highlighting the upper stars let's get down to the technical side of things now the settings we're using tonight is a 30 second exposure. I focused in on the tree trunk right there. I'm shooting on a really low f-stop that this 20 mil lens allows me to, what, 1.8? And my ISO is 100. I've deliberately, I've never shot on 100 before. I usually shoot on these on 200. So I'm just gonna go as low as possible because there's a lot of light pollution and we'll see what happens. And then I'm gonna shoot this for, um, for about as long as I can. So I go to my uh, quick find menu on the Nikon Z6 and I have interval timer shooting there. And I'm going to have to shoot 30 second exposures. But what I want to do is I want to shoot many of them. So 9,009. That should do the trick. I'm going to put silent photography on because that actually means there's absolutely no shake in the camera because shake will stuff up my um, tree in the foreground. Then I want to go interval timer 0.5. So it's 0.5, it's ready to start now when I pull the trigger. What would make this shoot absolutely ideal is a thing called an intervalometer. That is not a part of a time machine that enables you to go back in time, although that would be super, super cool. Nope, an intervalometer enables you to uh, take a photograph for as long as you like at whatever interval you like. And so you could put it on five minutes at 100 ISO and take 50 shots. And I, I'm sure the result will be just stunning. I don't have an intervalometer. I don't even have a time machine. If I want to pause it, there's an OK button where my thumb is that you can't see that will reset that. But what I'm going to do first is my first shot when I press go is I'm going to light up that tree so that my very first shot will highlight the tree. So I have that in the bag if I need it later on. And the idea is that the camera will then just take shots, 30 second intervals. So it'll take a 30 second exposure, but then half a second break. So what I'm going to do now is just hang around for, you know, an hour, maybe two. I've got my trusty headphones, which you need to bring if you don't have any company. 
I'm actually going to listen to a podcast about um, YouTube called the YouTube Creators Podcast, which I would highly recommend to any of you that are on YouTube. It's just a, it's a gun show, and Dusty is the host, and he knows his stuff, and has on some amazing guests that just talk through all the facets of um, YouTube from a creator's point of view. So I really enjoy that. Bit of a plug for you, Dusty. He doesn't know who I am or will ever watch this channel or whatever, but I love it. So come on, let's go. If you wonder what I do while I'm taking these shots at the moment, I'm just walking around in circles. I've got a uh, step counter, Christmas, so i just stepping it out. I just looked at it, it said like 110. I was like, what? 110? And it, well, it's just gone past midnight, so let's reset all my hard work. It's a little bit disconcerting shooting like this because as I look into the screen, there's like a, like a mouth and eyes and I have no neck. This is my beard. It just blends into a jumper. Look ridiculous. I hope in post I can pull it out and make this little this little beauty really pop. Now there's no way you can see this, but just in this direction, so the moon is behind me, so I can see in the sky the clouds, really high cloud and really thin clouds start to spear across the sky. And it looks really cool, but the problem is it's really, really subtle and really light, but any sort of cloud will stuff up my star trails. So, so far we've been going for about 40 minutes and I've just noticed there's a glimmer of, of cloud, which you'll be able to see in post as I process the, um, the image in just a minute. Um, and so I'm, I'm thinking that my time is coming to an end here. I'm going to leave it go for as long as I possibly can, but knowing that in post, if there's any shots with cloud in it, especially high cloud, low cloud in this case, a horizon cloud is fine. That's cloud right across the horizon, but any other cloud will ruin the shot. And so I'll just have to backtrack the images until we've got a, a cutoff point where we don't have to use the, the cloud ones anymore. So bit of a bummer. 5,000 steps later, 1.30 in the morning, cloud has completely consumed the shot. I'm now going to go home and edit these up. <laughs> no, I'm not. Going home to bed. About 153 images to choose from and I'm going to start here because that was my first one and just going to go in one to the second image we go to the develop module and then I'm going to edit this and then I'm going to sync all the other images to it so I start by moving the contrast up and down so I like a little bit of dark contrast in the sky the highlights We'll take the highlights down, shadows, increase the whites, increases the whites of the stars, very important with astro, and again blacks is increasing the blacks in the sky which creates a greater contrast. Then you have the magic button, the clarity button, and that is looking pretty good. Go to the saturation, just see if it needs a bit more colour, uh, bump up the vibrance, touch of dehaze but you've got to go calm on that then I'm going to go to lens corrections and at lens corrections I'm going to enable profile corrections and I was shooting with a 20 wheel Nikon look at that Whew, brightest day let's go manual and vignetting as you can see it's a bit of vignetting so we want to take that down so these corners are not blown out like they previously were so I think that looks good and then what I'm going to do is put a mask on it a horizontal mask with a really wide berth if you press shift it gives you an automatic straight line and then I'm just going to take the exposure down in the bottom half of that shot because it's just too bright and maybe just spread that out a little bit so I'm thinking that's okay and we'll see what happens now. So if I go command copy, just copies all those settings. I then go right to the end to, there were two shots I took afterwards. So I'm gonna to go to 151 and then I go sync and it syncs all those photos, just how we want them to be sunk. Select all your images. 
you know which ones you've edited because of this little box at the bottom of the image you shift and then I go right click edit in now I could edit in Adobe Photoshop here but I'm actually going to go down opens layers in Photoshop and this will take some time Now they're all imported, all you do is a couple of easy steps. You select the first layer, then you scroll all the way down, go shift and select the last one. Then we need to make sure that they're all auto aligned. So we go edit, auto align layers, go auto. The reason we need to do that is so that that tree, if the camera moved at all, that tree will be fuzzy and the light trails, the star trails won't connect up. So auto align will bring all of that together and make sure it's all tickety boo, looking real sharp, real snazzy, and then one more step and we're done. And once you do the auto align, which do not be fooled, does take a long time, then all you need to do is go right to the top, again, select all the images with shift to the end, and then go to this little section here where you can change what the layers look like and select lighten, See this just here, boom, there it is. That's what it looks like. The light trails are this long, you see from here to here, the reason they're that long is that's about 45 minutes to an hour, hour and a half. Um, if you're out all night, you get a, a ring all the way around. The reason they're different colors is because it's shot on a low ISO. So if you want colors in the stars, shoot on a really low ISO. You have the beautiful textures and the light coming off this tree. It staggers me all the time how when things can appear to be pitch black, there is still light at work. It's just, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. And then you can see the cloud that kind of cuts through this image. If we go all the way through to here, that's not bad. So maybe, maybe I stick with that. We still got a little bit here and here, but it's kind of faded, it's nice. Uh, we don't want to take out too much because then it just pulls away from our whole image. But maybe, um, maybe that, if we look at these, um, these shorter stars in here, do they increase or decrease in length as um, we add? I'm not sure they do. So there you go, I think I'm gonna go with that. And, um, and now what I do is just one final touch is I'm gonna save this back into Lightroom, do a final tweak and then export it. So now we've moved the image back to Lightroom, which you do by saving it. Be aware that these files are massive. This one to save it at four gig, so it's huge. Um, and also I've chosen not to use the highlighted tree because I love the textures and the colors of this tree as it is. So if I go to the develop module, and we're just sort of polishing this up. It's not perfect, but the conditions weren't perfect, so it doesn't matter. It's done, I'm happy with it, and I love how this little, uh, little center of the universe just hangs on the edge of that branch. Nice little cheeky shot there. Uh, not bad for a, for a night out. And there it is. If you enjoyed this, please sub. You know the deals. Give us a like if nothing else. That really, really helps the channel. Hope you learned something. Hope you gained something. And did you like the snake? <whistles> that snake. Gee whiz. Scared the bejeebas out of us. Whew. Laters, everybody. home to sleep to nurse the injury I get from my walking into something in just a second that I can't possibly see because I'm talking to you